Hi. Today, we are going to learn how to animate a BFDI character in Adobe Animate. Before we get started, there are a few things I want to say. Firstly, thank you so much for 3000 subscribers. It's been fun making animations you guys enjoy. And also, this tutorial only applies to Adobe Animate and Adobe Flash, so if you're using other programs like Flip a Clip, this process won't really work. You might need to know a bit about different kinds of tools and shortcuts Animate has to offer, but if you are at least somewhat familiar, without further ado, let's Animate. First, we have to set up your animation, starting with audio. But if you don't need it, just skip this part. Go to File, Import, and then Import to Stage. Find and open your audio, and make enough frames for the audio to fit. Then, go to Properties, and change the sync to Stream and the Repeat to times 1. This way you can hear the audio while scrolling through frames. Then, I make the character. Don't. Keep everything on the same layer. Do. Make each part of the character on its own separate layer. This way when we use symbols in our animation, they do not have trouble when we get to tweening, which is basically making symbols move. What I usually do is make 6 or 7 layers each for a different part of the character. At the bottom, there's a layer or two for the legs, and a layer for the arm facing away from the camera. Then, a layer for the body, with another for the other arm and two for the character's eyes and mouth. Some BFDI characters don't have certain body parts, so you don't have to have everything if it's not needed. You can also get BFDI assets from the source files of the show, which will be linked in the description. Next, I do lip sync, matching the character's mouth to the audio. To do that, I cycle between a few mouths depending on the sound of the dialogue. There are up to like 11 different kinds of mouths, but to keep things simple most objects shows nowadays only use 4 to 6 main mouth symbols. Swapping symbols is much easier than drawing each mouth every single time, like most traditional animations. I use an open mouth for sounds like ah, uh, and he. A clenched teeth like mouth for sounds like cut, jut, gut, tut, sut, shut, jut, and zut. A lip biting mouth for fut, and gut. A small round mouth for sounds like o, u, er, and wa, and a closed mouth for sounds like but, m, put, and as a resting position. Some animations may include an extra L mouth, but I personally don't. You can if you want, though. In BFB especially, there are many different versions of mouths to fit different emotions, but to keep things simple, we only need two. One happy, one sad or neutral. If your mouths are graphic symbols, a way to make lip sync smooth is to tween the mouths in their respective symbols, so they transition well into each other, do. Make sure to set it to play once from frame 1. Don't. Not set it. If you don't, your lip sync will end up looking static and you won't really see the symbol move as much. And if you want, you can also slightly edit mouths in between changes to make it even smoother. Now it's all just a matter of matching these mouths up to the voices in our animation. Place an open mouth onto the mouth layer, and listen to the audio. When Pin says good, her mouth should go from an O mouth on the U, then to a closed teeth mouth on the G. And when she says O no, we see an open and O mouth on the O, and teeth mouth on the N, etc, etc. Now your animation should look like this. Good, good. Oh no! Like in my last tutorial which you should watch after this, eyes are just black ovals. You should make the eyes symbols so they can be tweened and duplicated to make different expressions. To make different kinds of expressions, you should use eyebrows and eyelids, which are just represented with simple lines. Luckily for us, the FDI faces only require at least one eyebrow. These eyebrows are shaped to show various expressions. Lines that point towards the eyes are angry, lines pointing away from the eyes are sad or worried, lines flat on the eyes can be barred or smug. Semicircle-shaped lines under the eyes make them look widened, semicircled lines above the eyes can be seen as happy or surprised. And a semicircled line and a flat or sad line together can make a confused or smug expression. 
to make a smooth transition between faces, you can just wean them around if you want, but I like to add a blink in between different expressions. To make a blink, make some new frames in between two expressions and duplicate the eye symbol in it. This will be the closed eyes. Double click on it to edit it, and replace the eyes with two curved lines which can look like closed eyes. I'd recommend moving the closed eyes down for the next step. Pay attention to this part, because it's a bit confusing. I'd recommend turning on onion skin so you can do this right. Make a new keyframe right before the next face, then make a new frame behind that one. On this new frame, move the eyes down, and sort of flatten them by making them shorter and wider. This adds a squash to the blink. Also widen the eyes on the first frame, but not as much. Make the remaining frames a classic queen. Then, make a frame before that which should be on the first open eye symbol. Lower and flatten that as well. Make a new frame a little behind it, then tween. Do the same on the other side, just with the tweaking done on the first frame rather than last. Don't. Keep classic queens at their default settings. Do. Use easing, which affects the movement of the tween. Click on the tween then find the ease effect box. Here you can select from multiple eases including ease in, ease out, and ease in out. The specific style is up to personal preference, but I like using the Cirque style. These tweens of the eyes eases should be in, out, and then out again. Now your animation should look like this. Good, good. Oh no! The limb movements are the easiest things to animate in my opinion. The simple way you move them can be used for a lot of things. I also went over how to draw arms in my asset tutorial as well, but to put it simply, they're just stickman arms with balls hey, yeah. on the end. To make an arm move, draw two different poses on different frames and make them into symbols. Make sure to drag the white dot called the anchor point to the stick end. Then, add a new frame in between them. And tweak the arm in a way so it's like a midway point between each pose. On the next frame overdo the same. Then make both side a tween. The one on the left should have an in ease and the right should have an out ease. PAUSE! WHAT IS THAT? Oh, this. This is mostly optional, but if you're looking for that extra emotion and stuff, don't. Make the in-between frame just a slightly altered pose. Do. Make smear frames. Smear frames are common in animation to act as motion blur for big movements. There's no specific way to make one, just make a distorted drawing to connect two poses. This way extreme motions feel less stiff and more lively. Now your animation should look like this. Good, good. Oh no! For individual legs, it's the same thing. Just draw, edit and tween. If there isn't any leg movement or you're using the walk cycle legs from the BFDI assets, you can just make both legs on the same layer. But, depending on what the character is doing, I would make them on different layers and slash or do the next step first. I don't exactly have a name for this, but it's like the torsos on rig characters and is very important. This makes it so you can move the character's upper body all at once. Make a new layer above your character and copy all the frames of the character's body, arms, and face. Then, on the new layer, use any drawing tool you want to make a small dot in the center of your screen, and make it into a graphic symbol. Edit the new symbol, and paste and overwrite on the first frame. Now you should see your character with everything except for their legs. Double click out of the symbol and try to align it with its wing. Then, clear the frames under the symbols. Now you can move the upper body around any way you want. Then, make the legs on the layers under it. I'd also recommend squashing and stretching the legs and upper body if it goes up and down. Squash and stretch is important. Don't. Leave the anchor point in the center of the symbol. Do. Drag this point to the bottom of the symbol so it can't be dislocated from the legs if you tween it. For characters who levitate, there's an easy way jack and gel if I make them appear to float. Take the symbol of your animation, make a frame at the very end of the scene, and hit the up arrow once or twice. Then, make the other frames a tween, select the tween, and go to properties and click the pencil icon. Now you should see a line on a graph. Click on where the line reaches 30 bring it up a bit, and where it dips down, drag it down to 70 then, make it so the white dots can three spaces far from each side of the blocks. 
Now your graph should look like a transverse wave and the character should look like this. And when a character is walking, make the character symbol a movie clip, then make a symbol out of that as a graphic symbol. In this new graphic symbol, make a short, out ease between, with the first frame being a bit lower than the last. Also, you can't see the animations inside a movie clip when you're animating, but you will see it when you export the final product. And now you should have an animated character. Good, good. Oh no! Wait, wait, there's something we forgot. When looking over your animation, you may find that it's a bit out of sync with the audio. To fix this just remove the frame or two from the beginning of the animation. For this specific one, I found that it was more off sync when I did this so I left it as is, but I would highly recommend doing it if something feels off to you. Additionally, there are some things called JSFLs, which can be used in Adobe Animate to edit your animation. I use the Shaker JSFL in the BFDI source files in the infamous spline tween, which will be linked in the description. To use a JSFL, take a symbol, select the frames you want to change including the last keyframe, go to commands, run commands, and select a JSFL. To use the shaker, just input the amount of horizontal, vertical, and rotational shake, and whether you want the shake to fade out or sync or not, with what, I have no idea to be honest. To use the spline tween, just select all frames including the last frame and make sure your symbol is graphic. Now we're ready to make our animation into a video. Head over to properties and under the published settings there should be a more settings box. Click it. When here, set both audio settings to mp3, 160 kbs, and stereo. Then click OK. Go to file, export, then export video slash media. The render size is probably 640 by 360 by default, but if you leave it like this your animation will end up looking pixelated and stuff, so set the width to 1920 or 1280 to upscale it. Then, make sure the frame range goes from the start of the scene to the last. You can check exactly which frame you're on via the white number in the corner of the timeline. There is also an option to change the format. I'd recommend sticking with H.264, which is just an MP4. Finally, next to output, give the file a name next to its folder, select the box to start Adobe Media Encoder, and hit export. Then shortly after, the Media Encoder should open up and process your animation. When you see it say done with a green check mark, you've got yourself a video. Okay, now you should have an animated BFDI character. Wait. I didn't go too in depth, so this may not be the definitive animation guide but I hope it still helped. Well we could just stop here if there's something extra you can add to your animation to make it more complete. Let's make a background for our animation. I'm nowhere close to a background artist, but I could share common traits they have. Most object show backgrounds nowadays are very simple and minimal by being comprised of simple shapes and flat colors. I usually make backgrounds using the line and shape tools. For outdoor environments, I would make a rectangle close to the bottom which will be our floor. I'd then pull out parts of it to make curves, and on a different layer below the ground, make a large blue rectangle that covers the entire screen. This is the sky. Personally I would make it a gradient, which you do by opening up the color window, changing solid color to linear gradient, and making the two points on either side of the bar at the bottom different shades of blue. Then, select the sky and click F rotate the gradient so that it goes from top to bottom. The orientation of the colors is up to personal preference, and you can also make clouds by drawing fluffy shapes with the paintbrush tool, coloring them in with an off-white. Make shading lines and fill them in with a darker color. For other parts, it's just more simple shapes with flat colors. The colors you use are also your choice. An extra detail you can add is some grass tufts, which are just light or dark spots on the grass. 
for indoor environments, you probably need to know a little bit about perspective, but most of the time you can just get away with different kinds of rectangles with different shades as walls, floors, etc. If you want to make a window or anything on a wall, make a shape that follows the perspective of the line and color it in. Don't include lines. Do delete all the lines by double clicking them and hitting backspace. This way the background doesn't stand out as much as the characters in the scene. Congrats! Now you should have a BFDI animation and a background to go with it. Thank you so much for 3k subs and waiting for this video, and if I missed anything, leave a comment and I may go over it in future videos. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos and animations like this. Hope this helped. Bye.